Today I wanted to talk to you all about dogs. And I've got my house dogs. This is Olive. She's a Hungarian wirehead Vizsla. And then this one is Minnie. She's a miniature wirehaired dachshund. And dogs are absolutely incredible creatures. I've had dogs around me all of my life and I wouldn't want to be without one. And they are extraordinary creatures that range in all sorts of colours, sizes and uses. And of course they all go right back to the wolf or the wild dogs. And then over centuries or thousands of years, as people, we've selectively bred for all sorts of different sizes and types of dogs. So you've got everything from a little miniature wirehead dachshund or a chihuahua right through to a Great Dane. And we use them for lots of different work. So Olive here is hunt, point and retrieve. So she goes out shooting and will go on point and then she'll flush a bird, it will be shot and then she can go and retrieve it. That's the use of those. You've got Labradors that do that or Spaniels that are hunting dogs. The miniature wirehead dachshund is one of the hound families that hunt and they're incredible with their little noses. They're always hunting and on a scent. And then of course you've got hearing dogs for the deaf, you've got guide dogs, you've got sniffer dogs, police dogs, just remarkable creatures and assistance dogs that help look after people who've got some kind of disability. So they are amazing and we're learning a lot about them all the time. But the dogs that I use most on the farm are of course the Border Collies. Let me put my two uh, house dogs away and then I'll tell you all about the Collies. Olive, <laughs> Minnie. Now the house dogs of course are really pets and they have the comfort of living in the house and some people say you know why do your working dogs live outside in a kennel? Well it's not being cruel, they've got a lovely warm area to sleep, uh, they've got plenty of space, they've got water and then I feed them once a day and as a working dog it's quite good to give them a space to live and also if they're covered in sheet muck and mud and dirt the last thing you want them doing is coming into the house and putting it all over the kitchen floor or jumping on the settee. Anyway this is Peg. Now Peg is a working border collie that I've had now since she was about five years old. She's absolutely gorgeous but sadly the person who had her before me passed away, Steve Barry, he had a heart attack and I was fortunate enough to be able to be offered Peg to have working for me. And of course, when Steve sadly passed away, he took the commands with him. So I had to learn or teach Peg new commands to a certain degree. Here, here, Peg, 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 yeah, good girl, good girl. The common commands that are used in the UK, in fact, all over the world, the voice commands are right is away, come by is to the left and then there's various stops so stop stand lie down sit and so I used those on Peg and eventually she got the hang of it well actually quite quickly and then I went to a friend of mine Dick Ropers uh, and he is a fantastic sheepdog trialing man he's been in the England team he's one one man and his dog and he started doing various whistles to see what the whistle commands were for the right and the left and the stop and very quickly he found out which they were. I recorded his whistling and then I practiced that and now could start working Peg. But sadly, she's getting on a bit now. She's now 14 years old and she's started to go very deaf and a bit blind. So I took her to the vet that you may have seen on television recently and um, she's got the lens in one of her eyes has yeah. slipped, I know. <laughs> And so she can't see very well out of one eye and the other eye is starting to get a bit cloudy. So she gets a bit confused and can't really see where she's going. So no longer can she work the sheep. So I've now just eased her into gentle retirement and she just potters around the farmyard. But she's still gorgeous and I still adore her and she'll just have a happy retirement in her old age, won't you Peg? What a good girl. So what do I do now to be able to work the sheep on the farm? I've been searching for a replacement 
but it's not easy to find the right dog. In my busy life, I haven't got time to train a puppy or bring a puppy on. You can buy a puppy at eight weeks old and it'll be working reasonably well by the time it's a year, year and a half, but I want something that can work straight away. So I've been looking for a trained dog. Right, let's put Peg away. Here, good girl, in you go. And so, I'm pleased to announce that I've now found the perfect animal. And when I say I'm looking for a sheep dog, all dogs are called dogs, but of course the male is a dog and the female is a bitch. And what we have on this farm is mainly bitches. And if you bring a dog into the mix, a male, that can stir things up a bit. So I've specifically been looking for a bitch, a female, one that's trained, one that's very friendly and gets on with everybody because we've got the Cotswold Farm Park with all of our visitors, lots of people coming to the farm. I do some work on the telly. So it needs to be quite a resilient, a very friendly dog that gets on with all the other dogs, but also people. And this is what I found. This is little Gwen and she's absolutely gorgeous. So she's a 15 month old border collie and she's a tricolour. Collies come all sorts of different colours. The, the classic is the black and white, but she's black and white and she's got little ginger bits on her face and on her ears and just under her tail. And interestingly, if you take a closer look, Gwen, she's got what we call a wall eye. So over the side of her face that's black, she's got a brown eye. And then on the side that's white, she's got that bluey gray eye. And that's called a wall eye. And she can see out of that perfectly well and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Right, let's take her out into the field and I'll show you her in action. Good girl. Good girl. So the first thing you've got to do to encourage a sheepdog to work for you is A, for it to have all the right instincts so it wants to work, but then for it to love you and be doing it to please you. So you're the alpha male or female of the pack because basically the sheepdog, like all dogs, will go back to the wolf. And what we're doing here is using their hunt, hunting instincts and their rounding up instincts to gather the sheep. And you've just taken out the killing bit. And in their instinct, they're out there trying to get lunch. And they're using you as their help, as part of their pack to do that. And so collies, border collies, have this instinct to round up the sheep and bring them to you. And, but what you don't want them is them flying in and biting and gripping the sheep, it's called. And so initially, what I had to do was make sure Gwen loved me and wanted to work for me, which Gwen, she does now. We're very fond of each other. I think she's absolutely gorgeous. She's fitted in with the family. She loves all the other dogs. She gets on with everyone on the farm. And I bought her from North Wales, from a lady who's German and her husband is Welsh. So Gwen speaks a bit of German and a bit of Welsh and uh, is slowly learning English because I don't speak German or Welsh. <laughs> so Gwen, good girl. And so what I had to do was um, speak to the lady that I had her on trial from for about three weeks before I decided to buy her. And I videoed her on my phone, getting all those commands so that I could then replicate them out in the field. So I'll just show you this video. Come by. Or you can say, come by. Gwen, 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 Gwen. She just wants to go. Are we... Gwen, 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 good girl. Good girl. Gwen, 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 here. Stand. So there we are. <laughs> and so what I've been trying to do is get it right. And with my previous collie, Peg, I used my mouth to whistle. <whistles> but with this one, with Gwen, she is being taught on a mouth whistle. So the first thing I've got to do is learn how to use this. There are all sorts of different mouth whistles, but the sheepdog whistles are very much like this. So what you do is you put your tongue against there, lips round the edge, and then you just blow gently through the hole. Like that. But when you're whistling to a dog, or speaking to it, or voice commands, 
they need to be very consistent and very clear. So if you get your whistle wrong, or if you've been eating chocolate and it all comes out a bit weird, the dog just won't understand you. It's like then speaking Japanese to it. So I've been practicing the whistles. And I've pretty much mastered it now, I think. And Logan's this one is, a Logan whistle. It's a, it's a metal one, but you can get plastic ones too. Here, Gwen, Gwen. Here, here. Gwen. Once you go into the field with the sheep and Gwen has spotted the sheep at the other end of the field, she's really keen to go. And initially I had to have her on a lead and hold her in. Gwen, here, come here, here, here. here. That'll do, good girl. Just remembering those commands. And then when you start a dog off to cast out either to the right or to the left stand, what you want is them to make it easier for them. If you want them to go to the right, stand them on your right. If you want them to go to your left stand, you stand them on your left and then they'll know initially which way to go. So uh, which way shall I send her? I might send her to the left. And so here we go. Come by. So she's got a lovely wide outrun. Going right out round those sheep. She's coming a little bit tight. Then she should go right out round behind them. So that's her stop whistle. It's done. And then I'll walk over there and get a little bit closer. Steady, steady. So steady is the walk on command. And she should slowly bring them towards me. That natural instinct to bring the sheep towards the person who's working the dog. Away, away, away. Stand, stand. Away. Stand. So she stops very, very well. One of the key things about working a sheepdog is being able to get the stop. Stand. Stand. Away. Stand. Good girl. Good girl. And what I like about her is she's up on her feet. Away. Stand. Until I ask her to stop. Stand. She's not flying into them too hard. Away. Taking the commands with lots of response. Stand. Stand. So the left hand command, come, no, nah, stand, come by. So I just had to correct her there. It'd be quite a brave dog to bring the sheep out of a corner. There we are, she got up round behind them. Stand. So the work you want to do with the sheep, our way is to be able to drive them in any direction you want. So away from you, towards you, across a field, to be able to drive them into the handling pens, to be able to work with them. And so you want a dog that's responsive, listening to you, and being able to get the job done with least stress on you and the dog and the sheep as possible. That's the stop command. Stand. So if you remember from the video, stand is stop, walk on, is steady, so she'll just get her to walk on behind them. Steady, steady. So she's just walking up behind them now. I'll get her to stop, stand, and then I'll get her to bring them back. Come by. That's the left hand command. And then she gets up round behind them. That's the stop. Once the sheep come towards me, 
Stand. Oh, bit of a dodgy whistle. <laughs> Stand. So while she's learning my voice and my whistles, I might use the whistle and then reiterate it with the voice command. And there we are, the sheep walking steadily towards me. Stand. She's left from some behind, so I'll send her around to the right. Away. Nah, stand. Away. Nah, stand. Away. Stand. Good girl. What's really important when you're working them, if you give them a right or left hand command or a stop and they don't listen, you've got to get them to do it because if they get into bad habits and start going the wrong way, they get confused. So I was trying to send her around um, to the right and she was trying to go to the left. And so I was correcting her by going, ah, stop, so she knows that's wrong and then bringing her around to the right side. Away. And then some encouragement. Good girl, good girl. Steady, steady. That's walk on, steady. Stand. So lying down really nicely there. Stand. And then what I'll do is I'll just push the sheep across to the other side of the field. Steady, steady, good girl. What she's doing there is what's known as eye. So she's got her tail down, she's in the creeping position and she's using her eye to try and mesmerise the sheep. That's power, moving the sheep along. Because those sheep, in their ancestries, think that she's a wolf and wants to eat them, so they're frightened of her. Steady, steady. So they're moving away. Good girl, steady. So the walk on whistle. Stand. Got that wrong. So round to the left now. And that's stop. And what's brilliant about Gwen is she's not too hard on them. She's not too keen. And so she's got this balance, bringing the sheep at a slow trot or a walk. So not rushing them everywhere. And here they are, they're coming nicely towards me. So they've actually stopped now. So I'll bring her on a little bit. Away. Away. Stand. Away. Nah. Away. 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 Nah. Away. Stand. Steady. Stand. Steady. Stand. Away. Nah. Away. And then the last little bit, the all important bit, is to get the dog off the sheep. And the command for that is, that'll do. That'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Good girl, lots of praise. What a good girl. Hey, Grinny Gwen, it's a good girl. So I'm absolutely delighted with her. She's still got a lot of learning to do. She's still young and I need to be practicing with her, bringing her out here 20 minutes, morning and evening. Gwen, that'll do. Good girl, good girl. And then between us, we'll get the hang of it. Right, I'll take her over to the water trough for a drink. Have a drink. Where'd you go? The border collies come with lots of different lengths of hair. So you get very smooth coated ones. And this is sort of medium length. And then you get really hairy ones, a bit like Peg. And because Gwen is quite hairy, she does get warm. So a little cool down in the water trough is perfect for her. And also a bit of praise. So she's been working for me to please me, so I need to show her that I'm pleased. Not too much fuss, but just enough to know she's done a good job. Come on then. Well, there we are. A bit of an insight into working sheepdogs from an amateur. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll keep you updated on Gwen's progress.